Are you there, God? It's me, Margaret. Just say the title and many will respond with a knowing smile, a memory of what was a formative book for young people starting in the 1970s. Now, the novel by Judy Bloom, author of some 32 books that have sold more than 90 million copies, is about to premiere as a film. In the first of two reports, Jeffrey Brown visited Bloom and the filmmakers in Key West, Florida, where Bloom owns a bookstore for our arts and culture series, Canvas. In the new film, Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret. An 11-year-old girl worries whether her breasts will grow, when she'll get her period, if she, the daughter of an interfaith marriage, should embrace religion, and if so, which one? Familiar concerns of adolescents, perhaps. Do you think any of us will look like that when we're 19? We must! We must! We must increase our trust! But subjects not often addressed in novels for young readers, when Judy Bloom took them on in the 1970 novel on which the film is based. And I remember saying, you know, I've written two books, I'd published two books, yeah. but they were what I call from the outside. They weren't from deep inside. From this was the first one life. inside. Yes, yeah. and, I, and I remember saying to myself, I want to go inside and be honest and truthful and what I remember of being that age. Margaret was the first of some 16 books Bloom wrote that captured the real lives of tweens and teens and spoke frankly of such facts of life as puberty, masturbation, and sex. A specific focus for her, girls on what she calls the cusp. The cusp is everything, right? I mean, you're going from being a kid, you're still, you know, maybe playing jacks or jumping rope or doing mm -hmm. something. Then on the other hand, there were boys that was becoming more interesting. And um, so you, you're half and half. Is it the books have been devoured and loved by several generations of readers, oh, yeah. including in 1990, a then 11-year-old named Kelly Freeman. She was the first person who made me fall in love with reading. Prior to that, I really had a hard time connecting with anything. Everything felt sort of inaccessible to me. And then I read Judy Bloom, and I, I was like, oh, this is, this is, this is what reading can be like. 33 years later, after directing the critically acclaimed film Edge of 17 in 2016, One, two, three. Kelly Freeman Craig is now the director of the new Margaret film. Oh my God, hey, incredible. What are those boxes for? Don't worry about that. I want to hear more about camp. What else you learned? What else did you do? You're moving. What? Really, Mom? <laughs> Like the book, it's set in a New Jersey suburb in the late 60s, but she believes it's timeless. It was really that she was writing about me. I mean, that's really what it was. I related. Prior to that, I really hadn't, you know? I, I felt like this is my life reflected back at me, and I think when you're going through a hard time, there's something really reassuring about that, mm -hmm. knowing you're not alone. Mm -hmm. It was a feeling shared by fans outside an early screening of the film in Key West, Florida, where Judy Bloom and her husband George Cooper have long lived. This group of friends was visiting from outside Dayton, Ohio. It's incredibly authentic in a way that you don't find. It's honest and it's real and it deals with real life themes. I just remember myself reading them and I want to pass that along to my child. You know, I want them to be able to read it as well. So. I have all of them, like I said, <laughs> and the bindings are coming apart. I did a book report on this uh -huh. book in third grade. So. Bloom had long been reluctant to approve a film version of her novel. I just felt Hollywood was like, eh, you know, cutesy kids. But Freeman Craig and her mentor, veteran producer James Brooks, convinced her. And now author, cast, and crew gathered for a Key West version of a red carpet premiere. Rachel McAdams, herself a mother to two young children, plays Margaret's mother. I think these stories are important to talk about something that's so normal, but we just don't talk about it. It's just such a weird contradiction. There's days when I was crying more than the character really should have in the scene. You were crying because what? Thinking about, you know, my daughter going through these things or um, thinking about her growing up and, and hoping it's a wonderful, beautiful experience and that I can be everything she needs. And just there's a lot of emotion around it. Arms up, dear. 15-year-old Abby Ryder Fortson plays Margaret. And she thinks the story remains very relevant for her generation. How's that feel? 
I cannot wait to take it off. I feel like, especially in this time of social media where everything's kind of posed to make people look the best and things are edited, I think it's a good going off point, especially for this film, where you get to see all the awkward, funny, weird moments that make a, a person a person. I particularly think about the kids who went through puberty during the pandemic and how isolating that must have been. And, um, you know, just how freeing it can be to, to connect with someone who's had the same thing and you can share your story of your first bra and it's always funny <laughs> and horrible. And, um, you know, it just brings us all together. I think that one of the reasons why the movie is in a, such an important film is that it really can open up conversations that, you know, as a parent, you might not want to sit down and hey, we're gonna talk about sex and puberty and boobs and all that today. Right, finish your cereal. Yeah. Finish your cereal, <laughs> and you know, we'll get started. <laughs> In fact, director Kelly Freeman Craig is reading the book to her nine-year-old son to prepare him for seeing the film when it opens. He's a little young, but he was very curious. So it's been very interesting. Because, yes. Uh, he, I got through about two chapters and then he turned to me and he went, You've made an entire movie about boobs? <laughs> <laughs> for Judy Bloom, the real audience for this film is what she calls the nostalgia group. People now as old as my daughter, she was the first reader, you know, and she's 60. So it's the 60, 50, 40, 30, 20 somethings who remember it as being their childhoods. And I, and I know them because they come to the bookstore every day. Hopefully meet you. So well, here I am. And it's a very emotional thing. Sometimes they'll burst into tears, you know, and I know what it is. I represent in some way their childhood. But Bloom, whose books have faced bans going back to the 1980s and again now, also knows the film comes out at a contentious culture war moment, with Florida a major hotspot. It's hitting at the right time. We need it. We need it. I don't know what's going to happen when it opens. I, I don't know. In terms of how it hits in the political culture and yes, social culture? exactly. We'll look at that and much more in Judy Bloom's life as an author in part two of our report on her and the new film, Are You There, God? It's Me, Margot. That we just be normal and regular like everybody else. Just please, 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 please. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Jeffrey Brown in Key West, Florida. <laughs>